Detective Lena Ashford had seen a lot in her ten years on the force, but nothing like this. The world had changed in ways no one could have predicted. People no longer feared death, not in the traditional sense, anyway. With the advent of consciousness transfer technology, anyone with the means could upload their mind into a synthetic body, effectively granting them a form of immortality. These new bodies, or shells as they were colloquially known, were stronger, faster, and nearly indestructible. But now, the unthinkable was happening. Transhumans, people who had undergone the transfer, were dying. And no one knew why. Lena sat in her small, cluttered office, staring at the case files spread out before her. Each one was a mystery in itself, with no clear cause of death. The shells had simply stopped working. The consciousnesses housed within them had disappeared, leaving behind nothing but empty vessels. The media was having a field day with it, calling it the digital plague. But Lena knew better. There was no plague, no virus that could explain what was happening. Something else was going on. Something far more sinister. The first case had come in two weeks ago. A prominent businessman, Eric Brandt, had been found unresponsive in his home. His shell had shown no signs of external damage, no malfunction in the hardware or software. It was as if his consciousness had simply vanished. Since then, there had been five more cases, all similar, no sign of foul play, no obvious cause of death. Lena's boss had assigned her to the case because of her background in cybernetics. She had worked in the field before joining the police force, designing and programming the very shells that were now failing. If anyone could figure out what was happening, it was her. But so far, she was at a loss. Lena leaned back in her chair, rubbing her temples. The clock on the wall ticked away the seconds, a constant reminder that time was running out. If she didn't find some answers soon, there would be more deaths, more unexplained disappearances. And she wasn't sure how much longer the public could be kept in the dark. She picked up the latest case file, flipping through the pages. This one was different from the others. The victim, a woman named Alice Corinne, had been a vocal critic of the consciousness transfer process. She had only undergone the procedure after a near-fatal accident left her with no other choice. Her shell had been top of the line, one of the most advanced models available. And yet, it had failed just like the others. Lena frowned, her eyes narrowing as she studied the report. There was something here, something she had missed before. She grabbed her tablet and pulled up the autopsy data, scanning the results for anything unusual. And there it was, a tiny anomaly in the neural interface so small it had been overlooked by the initial investigators. The neural interface was the most critical part of the transfer process. It was the link between the human consciousness and the synthetic shell. If something went wrong with the interface, it could have catastrophic consequences. Lena zoomed in on the data, analyzing the anomaly. It wasn't a malfunction. It was a deliberate modification. Someone had tampered with Alice Corin's interface, and whoever it was knew exactly what they were doing. Her heart raced as she made the connection. If this wasn't an isolated incident, then the other victims might have been tampered with as well. She needed to check the other cases, compare the data. But if she was right, this wasn't just sabotage, it was murder. Lena worked late into the night, combing through the files, analyzing the data with a meticulous eye. As the hours passed, a pattern began to emerge. Each of the victims had undergone a similar modification to their neural interfaces, a subtle but deadly alteration that had gone unnoticed until now. But who could have done it? The modifications were too sophisticated for just anyone to pull off. They required an in-depth knowledge of consciousness transfer technology, the kind of knowledge only a handful of people possessed. Lena's mind raced as she considered the possibilities. The victims had no apparent connection to each other, no common link that could explain why they had been targeted. But someone had gone to great lengths to cover their tracks, and that kind of effort wasn't made without a reason. As she continued to dig, a name kept coming up, a name she hadn't expected to see. Dr. Elias Granger, the lead scientist behind the consciousness transfer technology, had been involved in the development of the neural interfaces used in the victim's shells. He had the knowledge, the access, and the expertise to make the modifications. But why would Granger, a respected figure in the scientific community, risk everything to kill these people. Lena knew she was onto something, 
but she needed more evidence before she could confront him. The next morning, Lena paid a visit to Granger's lab. The building was sleek and modern, with walls of glass and steel that reflected the early morning sunlight. Inside, the lab was a hive of activity, with scientists and engineers moving about, engrossed in their work. Granger's office was at the back of the lab, a large, glass-walled room that overlooked the city. He was sitting at his desk when Lena arrived, his eyes fixed on a series of holographic screens displaying complex data. Detective Ashford, he said, looking up as she entered. To what do I owe the pleasure? Lena kept her expression neutral as she approached his desk. Dr. Granger, I'm investigating the recent deaths of several transhumans. I found some irregularities in the neural interfaces of the victims. Granger's expression didn't change, but Lena noticed a slight tension in his posture. Irregularities? What kind of irregularities? Lena placed her tablet on the desk, bringing up the data. Someone modified the interfaces, causing the consciousnesses to destabilize and eventually disappear. The modifications were subtle, but they were there. Granger studied the data, his face unreadable. This is serious, he said after a moment. But I assure you, detective, I had nothing to do with these modifications. I designed the neural interfaces, yes, but I have no reason to harm anyone. Lena didn't respond immediately, watching him closely. She had expected him to deny involvement, but there was something off about his reaction. He was too calm, too composed. There's more, she said deciding to push further. I found evidence that links you to all of the victims. You oversaw the installation of their neural interfaces personally. Why is that? Granger's eyes narrowed slightly, but he remained silent. Dr. Granger, Lena continued, if there's something you're not telling me, now is the time. People are dying and I need to know why. For a moment, it seemed as though Granger might actually open up. But then he shook his head. You're grasping at straws, detective. I have no reason to kill these people. If you want to arrest me, go ahead. But you'll find no evidence of wrongdoing. Lena clenched her fists, frustration building inside her. She was so close, but Granger was stonewalling her. And without more concrete evidence, she couldn't force him to talk. I'll be in touch, she said finally, turning to leave. As she walked out of the lab, her mind raced with possibilities. She couldn't shake the feeling that Granger was hiding something, but without proof, her hands were tied. Back in her office, Lena stared at the case files, her mind working overtime. Granger was involved. She was sure of it. But there had to be a motive, something that would explain why he was targeting these people. Then it hit her, the victims weren't just random. They were all vocal critics of the consciousness transfer process, individuals who had questioned the ethics and safety of the technology. They were a threat to Granger's work, to his legacy. Lena's blood ran cold as she realized the truth. Granger wasn't just protecting his technology. He was silencing dissent, eliminating anyone who dared to challenge the future he had created. The next morning, Lena returned to Granger's lab, this time with a warrant. She wasn't leaving without answers. And this time, Granger wouldn't be able to hide behind lies and half-truths. As the lab doors slid open, Lena steeled herself for the confrontation ahead. The truth was out there, and she was going to find it, no matter the cost. Lena's steps echoed ominously as she walked through the pristine corridors of Granger's lab. She could feel the weight of the situation pressing down on her shoulders, knowing that this was her last chance to uncover the truth before more lives were lost. The warrant in her hand gave her authority, but it was her determination that would get her the answers she needed. As she approached Granger's office, she noticed something different. The usually bustling lab was unusually quiet. The scientists and engineers she had seen earlier were nowhere to be found. The silence was unsettling, and Lena's instincts told her that something was very wrong. She quickened her pace, her hand instinctively moving toward the holstered weapon at her side. When she reached Granger's office, the glass doors were slightly ajar. Lena pushed them open cautiously, her senses on high alert. Inside, the room was dimly lit, the holographic screens that had previously displayed complex data now dark and inactive. Granger stood by the large window, 
his back to her, staring out at the city skyline. He didn't turn around when she entered, but he spoke in a low, controlled voice. I knew you'd come back, detective, he said, his tone calm but with an undercurrent of resignation. I was hoping you wouldn't dig too deep, but I suppose that was too much to ask. Lena tightened her grip on the warrant, stepping further into the room. Dr. Granger, I have a warrant to search your lab and seize any evidence related to the deaths of the transhumans. I suggest you cooperate fully. Granger finally turned to face her, his expression unreadable in the dim light. You don't understand, detective. I never wanted it to come to this. Then explain it to me, Lena demanded. Explain why you modified those neural interfaces, why you're responsible for the deaths of these people. Granger sighed, a heavy sound that seemed to carry the weight of his actions. He moved to his desk and tapped a command on the surface, activating a hidden console. A series of holographic displays flickered to life, showing complex neural maps and schematics of the consciousness transfer process. I created the neural interfaces to be perfect, Granger began, his voice laced with a mix of pride and regret. But perfection comes at a cost. These people, the victims, they were not like the others. They had doubts, fears, reservations about the technology. Those emotions created instability in the neural link. Lena frowned, trying to piece together his explanation. So you're saying their emotions caused the modifications? Granger shook his head. No, detective. The modifications were my attempt to correct the instability. I wanted to make their transition seamless, to eliminate the emotional interference. But I was wrong. The modifications caused the neural pathways to degrade over time, leading to the collapse of their consciousnesses. Lena's heart sank as she listened. You experimented on them? Without their knowledge? Granger met her gaze, his eyes filled with a twisted sense of justification. I was trying to save them, detective. The transhumans, they're the future of humanity. We can't afford to let fear and doubt hold us back. I had to perfect the process, no matter the cost. Lena felt a surge of anger rise within her. You played God with their lives, Granger. You had no right to make that decision for them. Granger's expression hardened. Someone had to make the hard choices. We're on the brink of a new era. And sometimes, sacrifices are necessary. Before Lena could respond, an alarm blared throughout the lab, a high-pitched wail that sent a chill down her spine. Granger glanced at the console, his face going pale. No, it's too soon. What's happening? Lena demanded, her voice sharp with urgency. Granger's hands flew over the controls, his eyes wide with panic. The neural destabilization, it's spreading. It's affecting all the shells in the network. If I don't contain it, every transhuman connected to the system will disappear. Lena's mind raced as she processed the gravity of the situation. If Granger was telling the truth, thousands of lives were at risk. But could she trust him to fix the problem he had created? She didn't have time to weigh the options. What do you need to do? She asked, stepping closer to the console. Granger's fingers trembled as he brought up a series of commands. I need to isolate the affected shells, sever their connection to the network. It will prevent the spread, but it will also trap them in their current state. They'll be cut off from the outside world. Lena nodded, the choice clear. Do it. We can't let this spread any further. Granger hesitated for a moment, then entered the final command. The holographic displays flashed red as the system went into lockdown, severing the connections as he had described. The alarm slowly faded, leaving a heavy silence in its wake. It's done, Granger said quietly, his voice filled with a hollow emptiness. The spread has been contained. As Lena led Granger out of the lab, the quiet corridors seemed to echo with the ghosts of the lives that had been lost. She knew that this was only the beginning of a long, painful process of uncovering the full extent of what had happened and bringing justice to those who had suffered. The world had embraced the promise of immortality but it had come at a terrible price. And as Lena walked away from the lab, she couldn't shake the feeling that humanity was not ready for the future it had created. The boundaries between life and death had been blurred, 
but the consequences were all too real. In the end, the case of the dying transhumans would serve as a grim reminder that even in a world where death could be cheated, the price of playing God was always too high. Lena exhaled, her heart still pounding from the intensity of the moment. But the relief was short-lived. What about the transhumans who were already affected? Can we save them? Granger shook his head slowly. Once the neural pathways degrade past a certain point, there's no way to restore them. Their consciousnesses are gone. Lena's chest tightened with the weight of that reality. So many lives lost, and for what? A flawed pursuit of perfection? She turned to Granger, her expression grim. You're under arrest, Dr. Granger, for the unauthorized modification of neural interfaces and the deaths of six transhumans. You'll answer for what you've done. Granger didn't resist as she cuffed his hands behind his back. He simply stared at the darkened screens, his once brilliant mind now consumed by the consequences of his actions.